I was like, why can't I hear anybody? Oh my gosh, I'm not, I'm not part of this. It's fun. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're Mari. I finally get to meet you. Hi. Hi, it's so nice to finally meet you. Look, you're totally cuter than how I drew you too, man. <laughs> Do you remember the Women's March? And like, what about that experience was like so memorable for you? I mean, I remember really being really cold, <laughs> but I also remember how everyone was chanting their sign and I was with my friend and their mom. And I remember I was like, no one's gonna hear it, but I'll chant it out anyway. So I did it. And then there's a bunch of people that actually replied back and it grew louder and louder. And that's when I um, started to realize I really, I, um, loosened up and I realized that this is what I like to do. I like to speak up. So it's a really amazing um, memory that I have. I remember um, on a cold night, we still went and this is what happened. If I was a chicken and didn't go out on a cold night, I probably wouldn't have this opportunity. <laughs> so it's just amazing. Yeah, I, you just gave me goosebumps. I got little goosebumps there when you were when you were sharing. <laughs> so my question is, do you get to pick what projects you work on? And what about Love is Powerful did you connect with that made you want to illustrate it? So I don't get to pick my own projects. There's this really mean person who just chooses everything for, I'm totally joking. Yes, I get to pick my own project. <laughs> Usually um, what happens is I get, a, I get a, a letter or an email and it comes with um, a story attached and either an editor that I've worked with before or something that my agent will refer to me. Um, and I get a chance to sort of read the story over. And what I always do when I get a story is I pick it up and I read it out loud because if it passed the read out loud test, then you know it's going to make a good picture book. And that sounds like a silly test, but you would be surprised at how many people <laughs> failed the test. So uh, that's the first one is, is how well does it read out loud? Um, this one though just popped out because, I mean, Mari, you're a kid and you were born into a really good era and you are now living through a really bad era. <laughs> and I want to get you back to the really good era. And for those of us who lived in the good era for a while, we were kind of shell-shocked when 2016 happened and things didn't go the way we thought it was going to go. And um, I, I think a lot of people just got very depressed and sad. And um, I kind of gave into that sadness. And when the first Women's March was uh, coming around, um, I'd heard about it. I'm not really on social media very much, so I, I wasn't in, you know, the big thing of it. Everyone was on social media. Everyone was talking about it. Everyone was making the pink hats, and um, and I didn't know anything about it. I just knew that there was a Women's March. I, I had submitted artwork for some flyers and done everything that I could, but I was really depressed, and uh, I was actually in Atlanta, Georgia, when the w Women's March happened, and um the, of course, there was a massive parade there as well. And John Lewis was marching there. It was, it was an honor to see him go by. But I didn't make a sign. I didn't have anything ready to go. I was just sort of swept up by the moment because all these friends would come up and say, we're, we're going to march. We're going to do this. And I was just overwhelmed by the moment. Like I, I, I was completely unprepared to see how much I had felt up to that moment so alone. And until you marched in the march, that was when you realized you weren't alone, that there was a whole world was behind us in this. And it, it fed me. It just filled me up and, and made me feel great. And mm -hmm. so when I got this script, that was the first thing I thought was, OK, this is my chance to make the sign that I never made. So this is my sign. This is my love is powerful sign that I should have had at the woman, the first woman's march. Um, mm -hmm. So actually, you know, thank you for the opportunity to let me do that. <laughs> Um, but it was great because your story was just perfect. You know, it's it's the perfect story of, of how to understand what was going on. And and what I like about it is that 
it's a very simple message and we hear it all the time and it almost doesn't mean anything, but I'm telling you, Mari, when a kid says those words, it's a lot more powerful than when an adult says those words. <laughs> and, and I'm not surprised that everyone started chanting with you because, because we needed to hear it and we needed to know that you weren't jaded that you weren't messed up, that you could still see the future and that things mm -hmm. were still going to be good because so many of us couldn't feel it at that moment. Um, so for all those reasons, when I got the script, it was just a no brainer. It's like, yeah, Women's March, I'm on. I'm doing it. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. So we only have a little bit of time because all of our schedules are so crazy. So I want to get in one more question, and it's for um, both of you before we go. Um, what do you hope kids, parents, and adults will take away or learn after reading Love is Powerful? Mari, you want to go first? <laughs> sure. um, so for parents, I'm really hoping that they get more hope in themselves. Having hope is such a great thing because it can, although during sad times, it can make you feel happy. And if you're seeing things in a positive note and you truly mean it, then you'll be able to like have a new world to you. Instead of every having rain be sad, for instance, and actually being having rain be fun since you get to grow flowers at the end. And it's such an amazing um, message to adult and kids. I really hope that kids can speak up against um, things that are happening like this because the kids are actually the future. Although um, sometimes people discredit kids because they're younger, but honestly, age doesn't matter when it comes to speaking up for what's right. And that is an amazing message that everyone should know and love. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I don't know how to follow that up because that's, that's pretty succinct. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty dead on. <laughs> yeah, that was good. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sitting there like, I don't know, it's a good book. No. <laughs> um, gosh, how do you follow Mari? That's a really hard thing to do. <laughs> um, I'm going to say that what I hope people take away from this is um, – Wow, I hope we remember why we did it. That's it. Why we I hope we remember why we marched. And it's a kids book because it's a kids message that everybody needs to listen to. And uh and this book just I put a lot into it. I put a lot of frustration and sadness and a lot of hope and a lot of uh good wishes and it was the same thing as, you know, walking in the march the first time. You felt the good vibes and you just you just realized you were part of something bigger. That's what this book is for me. It's just, you're just a part of something bigger. And I think we all have to remember that. And I, I hope we remember why we marched and that that doesn't go away. No matter who gets elected next, that that, that feeling doesn't go away. So. New York. Bye. Thanks for having me. Yep. Bye. Thanks for having us. Have a good night.